For too many years, families of children with devastating illnesses have felt helpless as they watched their child suffer. Today, they're taking matters into their own hands and finally finding relief, treating their child with cannabis. This is One Family's Story. Welcome to another episode of Love Love and Cannabis. Cannabis. I am Nina Simmons. And I am Osiris Steffen. And we are the proud parents of Aiden Aiden Steffen. Hey everyone, how's it going out there? Hey, thanks for tuning in. Yes, thank you very much for joining us on another episode. Uh, So we wanted to continue our episode from the last in reference to our change in our brands that we've been using CBD-wise and the dosaging, and what we've seen, and why we changed. It's uh, been a really, really eye-opening experience. Uh, what's thankful for us is the fact that we were documenting and we can cross-reference what we've seen and why we decided to make the change that we made. Yeah, so before we get into that, so people approach us with um, just basically asking us what CBD oils that we use use and or what we would recommend so in general when you're looking for a cbd product you want to start it for a child or yourself or a family member i would definitely find a product that will give you a lab report yeah first and foremost you need to know what's been going on with that so you want to make sure that you have a clean product out there when you say clean, what do you mean? No pesticides, um, heavy metals. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, our, you know, that the farming, you know, they do use good farming practices. Okay. So we want to make sure it's a clean product that basically no dirty other stuff base, that is basically free from lead, things like that. So the lab reports will tell you this. From a good company, a reputable company. From a reputable company. And then they will also tell you what's in it. So a lot of, if you're doing a full spectrum oil, mm-hmm. which means it's the whole plant, the, the leaves. Everything. It's everything. That means you're going to get some other things in there besides CBD. Yeah. Which are not bad things for the most part. I mean terpenes. You get terpenes, which give the CBD its aroma. Yeah, and flavor but, too. And flavor, and it's also been known to also have some um, neuroprotectant properties, anti and, and inflammatory properties. So there's still more research to be done on terpenes, but you know a lot of them are there um, for a good good reason. Then you want to know what other cannabinoids are in the um, the oil. So it could be CBD, which probably is the the main one, which probably takes up 95 to 90% of the oil. But sometimes the oil has this thing and we'll get into this, we'll get into this, into this at another time, at another podcast, but some of them have like what you call CBG, CBC. So you'll see all those things. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. You definitely have to get a book that breaks each one down. Something simple to get you started, especially if you have no clue how this works or what, what the plan is exactly. Definitely do your research. Take your time. But what's so hard is you have time, but you don't have time. Yeah, because you want to get better. You don't want to yeah. waste time. Yeah. And you want to get your child better if you're using it for a child as well. Exactly. And then the lab report will also tell you how much THC is in the product. And then they can explain to you what exactly does that mean. Yeah, and how much you should use, how often. It's, uh, it's going to be a journey, uh, but you're going to learn so much from it. Exactly. So, so this is this is something. Don't be don't be afraid to ask questions, and to really ask for guidance, mm-hmm. because this is serious. You're using this to help a child who may be really sick, or you, you may use be using this for cancer. So you want to make sure the oil, you know, is the good stuff. Yeah, and it, people are available too to talk to you and answer your questions. Exactly. So another thing, um, the companies always come with dro- um, these droppers, right? But Osiris and I find that using a 1 ml syringe mm-hmm. is more accurate. Yeah. So most of the time the company will say, use half a dropper or use a full dropper. That's fine. But I think if you are going to be dosing medically, you really want to know exactly 
Yeah. Put to the precise measurement of what it is. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're giving 0.8. You know, you want to do 0.7. Sometimes kid may not take a full ML. You mean give them 0.9. So you really want to have those like numerical measurements. So I would recommend um, buying a 1 ML syringe. That's what we use. We never use a dropper. Yeah. Because it, we didn't like, we just don't know the the number, so it's not. Yeah, it's usually. In, I say for us, it's a little bit inaccurate, and also you want to save on the amount of oil you're using. Exactly. Oil, yes. Instead of the oil lasting two weeks, it's gonna last a week, a week and a half, and so that's something you definitely want to keep in mind when you're using a dropper versus a syringe. And you can get a syringe also from a pharmacy. Just walk up and say, "Hey, I, I need, need a one. M- yeah, I need a one, or a one ml syringe." Yeah, and then you're set. Then you can use that. Or you can order it online. You're not gonna find one ml syringe in the aisles. I don't think we've ever. No, you have to get it from the pharmacy. You have to yeah. go back and ask to the pharmacists who have it to go with their medicine. Yeah, for children. So that being said, and so I just this up this up uh, post came up on my, one of my social media feeds. And it, it's, it's called the Center for Food Safety Scorecard. Mm-hmm. So basically, the Center for Food Safety is a national nonprofit public interest and environmental advocacy organization working to empower people, support farmers, and protect the earth from harmful impacts of industrial agriculture. So they came up with their hemp oil slash CBD scorecard, where they took a 40 CBD companies and they 40, wow. yeah just and that's not that much it's not it's more yeah there's so many more so much more and they basically ripped them apart and gave them a ratings like you know you'll see at a restaurant yeah, a b c d and even f and a good amount actually got f I was like ooh so <laughs> yeah well there's some there's some garbage out there yeah folks. so um good. if you want to check that out and see which companies got an a and if you want to use those companies, it's up to you. Um, there was, and they do explain to you why certain companies got an A versus why some companies got a C. It was pretty interesting. I mean, currently the CBD that Aiden is taking is not even on there. So don't think just because the company you're using is not on there. What's important is that it's working. And you're getting results. Yeah, yeah it's important that you're getting, working, getting results. And you do have a lab report to stay to state that you know there are any, mm-hmm. like I said, heavy impurities. metals, imp- exactly impurities. So I mean, if you want to check the Center for Food Safety Hemp CBD Score Card, check it out, and you you can you know make a decision from there. But again, it's not. It only took four com- forty companies, and there's maybe. 400 companies. I mean, it's a lot. Well, that kind of helps, but you know, for a person who's this their first time, they're really hearing so many different voices about yes. what CBD, best CBD products to try for what specific things that you feel it would work for. They have a score sheet done for you already, rating. So they did all the vetting. So now mm-hmm. it comes out to, well, I'm feeling a certain way. This might work. Let me see which products that they rated actually can help me with these particular ailments that I'm or whatever I'm feeling at the time that I need it. So that helps. Yeah, and then for those who really want something USDA organic, they do list the companies that are It's not that many. It is really not that many. Because it's very hard to get that certification. Oh yeah. Very, very they don't so it's very, very hard. And not to say if the company that you're using is not USDA organic. Or it's not that good. It's not that doesn't mean it's not good. Because I was talking it's just sometimes some companies don't even have the money or resources to do that. To get the certification. Yeah, it's not easy. They may be organic and pass, but there's so much money just to get them to certify you that the company may not be able. To do it, and it's also a, a serious process too. Yeah, because you have to pay for that process. And so. You have to pay for everything. Yeah, so and it's like a money and thing. And scheduling. It, so it, it's just the time because I've spoken to someone about that. They said it is so much work. You have to make sure your machines are right. You have to make sure the land, everything that you work, it has to be pharmaceutical grade level. So I guess that's a good thing then. Process. Yeah, it is. Mm. It is. But for someone who's just starting out in the industry. It, it's kind of difficult, so you have to face, you have to save for that. So basically, you're saying that 
if you're not USDA certified, doesn't mean that you're a bad product. No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. It's just that if that's a if that's something you're looking to get to, do expect it to be not easy. Not to say that your product is not good anyway. It's just that you're just gonna have a challenge just to prove that. That's all. Got it. So yeah, so that was for look up if you're interested. Center for Food Safety Hemp C B D score board. If you're interested in seeing what they have to say and which CBD products are organic. Organic. And do note, it doesn't necessarily have to be organic. It just has to basically serve your need. Mm -hmm. And that takes you testing it out. Yeah. Ask ask them for a sample. They might be able to help you. Say, hey, look, I'm going through something. I need some assistance. Hey, how about a sample and see how it works? Yeah. And also, don't be afraid to call these companies. A lot of them are very, very friendly. And for helpful, yeah, the ones that do, the legit ones that do have a answering service. Yeah. So not all of them have an answering service or a customer service. Yeah, so try, you definitely want to try to have, to find a company that has an answering service that will actually answer you when you call. Yeah, and they actually know and they, what they're, and know what they're and talking about and then they can really support you. So that, so, yeah, so that being said, we tried quite a few oils mm-hmm. with Aiden. Oh, yes. It was a long list. We tried so many. Ah, oh, the experimenting. It was crazy. Uh, we would experiment with different types of oil. We would also experiment times a day of the oil. Did we mm-hmm. administer the oil? Where and how to administer the oil? Uh, whether oil, through rectal, through food, through drops, through uh, gummies at one point. It was daunting to go through all these levels. I mean, we originally started out with the droppers and the syringe, but it seemed like it wasn't really suppressing his seizure. It started to, we got some good moments, and then all of a sudden it just changes. Mm-hmm. After a month or a couple of months, or even after a year, it's like, okay, now we have to change it. Because he's gotten older, he was having um, his growth spurts, he was needing more water. So we were learning all these things as we go along, and we just decided we got to document it because there's too many variables right now that's affecting him. Yeah, so we go through one oil, then we'll have results. And then one experience we had is that like, we were doing really great, and then we started seeing changes, and then we like we looked in the back, we were like, oh, man, they added this additive. Yeah, because it started triggering his seizures, so we noticed that. Because in the beginning, his seizures would be fine, was under control, maybe one or two jerks here and there. And then I think after the oil finished and we replenished it, then we noticed a change after we... Re- um, we purchased a new bottle. Same product, same everything, but it started having a different effect on it. Yeah, so those kind of things we had to look out for. Is any additives that we saw. Then we had to look at the carrier oils. Yeah, we went through the ingredients. We went through the ingredients. We like, the we're like, ingredients. okay, he's kind of sensitive to MCT oils, so we know now. No MCT oil. Well, not even just so much MCT it was oil. Like, it was like an eight medium chain. Yeah. MCT. It got... Two granular. Six or something, yeah. It was eight. It was eight. So we had to make sure that he doesn't get that. It was like, wow. And <laughs> another one, it was another company where it had lechin oil. And the lechin is used as emulsifier in most products, especially cosmetic products. And they had it in his oil. And, and before that, it didn't have it. But we were trying to figure out, like, what's wrong? Why is the seizures it has an uptick? What's going on? So Nina just grabbed one of the oils, the new bottle, and we compared it. For some reason, we just kept the old bottle. And something in us just said, you know, keep the old bottle just in case. And we compared and noticed that the one difference in the ingredient was the lechin oil. I'm like, oh my God. And we called them. We literally called the company and like, hey, why'd you guys include this? Oh, we use that for emulsifier. It just expands the life of the product and also prevents some um, bacteria and things like, yeah, but it just is triggering us on seizures. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. We'll send you another bottle. He says it's not about the same thing. It had lechin oil in it. <laughs> so, yeah, so we had, to, we had to stop using that company, even though the company is very gracious to us yeah. and very kind, but we just, it wasn't helping Aiden anymore. No. And then Osiris, being in the industry, he's always getting people wanting to try their oil. Yeah. So we had another person that, you know, said their oil was doing good, very good with kids' epilepsy. But it had 
the legend. And I said, uh-oh. I was very excited, but I was like, here we go again. With the legend. With the legend. Yeah. And we used it. And we did see it. We and did we see did it. see it, so we were like, okay, man. Yeah. The election's done. It's so, just not so going to work. Yeah, because you had that back, question in the back of my mind. Maybe it wasn't legend. Maybe mm. it's just us. So you get a whole different product, same ingredient, same result. Yeah. So it's like those things, like there were, there be, um, I see people say, oh, CB doesn't work, or they were for my child. And they, I mean, how many oils did you try? How many companies did you try? You have to try yeah. at least one to two companies. And, and this is a long, yeah, it, it, I'm sorry, yes, many companies for you to really say that it was a fail. And yeah. then you have to wait. You can't just say after a month, after two. It has to be, you know, it's a long process. Yeah, especially also that you have to dose the uh, products, understand the dosaging, because no two oils are made the same. No two oils are processed the same, in a way. And we were very fortunate to find one recently that's been working, ideally. How we know this? Well, Aiden was having grand malls at, every morning at 4 o'clock. Every morning, like clockwork, it was really ridiculous. And we tried different steps. We tried different dosaging times to see if we can combat it. We were trying to understand what his cortisol levels were like in comparison to what is it during the date. See how much that's affecting it or that played a role into it. So all these things that we started analyzing, overanalyzing, overthinking, just trying to understand what is going on. When he's ready to go to bed from 7 p.m. to 10, 11, what goes on to him, uh, goes through him, that would trigger at 4 a.m. Right by clock. Grandma. So we just came, so basically I realized that it was his cortisol levels that rise up about two hours or so before it's time for him to wake up. So we tried the new oil, and we came up with a method that he had to have precisely the CBD oil at 10 p.m. Well, that's where we started out. It was 7 p.m. Because we give him two doses. In. Yeah, so we did one at 7 and one at 10. And we realized that that was working. Yeah, it was working. So his, the, so the grandma stopped. The but, grandma stopped. But the thing is, we had to wake him up at 10 p.m., which and is rough. Kid, yeah, that kid was not happy. Oh, my God. Could you imagine... You're in your best sleep. You haven't slept so peacefully in a quite a time. And now you find yourself being awakened at 10 p.m. <laughs> he was losing Medicine it. being shoved down. But it worked. Like, once we did it that way, he was so much better. So Yeah, like, yeah. Shoot. The grandma was completely stopped. He had maybe one or two jerks in the morning, and he was great the rest of the day. So, so it was like, ah. Uh, but then I figured out, if he goes to... This is really crazy. I figured out... If he goes to bed and he's sleeping before 8 o'clock, we can give him all the CBD at 7.30 and it will hold him off for the rest of the night. I think it's something to do with the cortisol levels. Again, not quite sure but how, it how it plays on, but it works. But if he goes to bed after 8, we have to wake him up and he has to get the CBD oil at 10. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So in the morning, he does get it as scheduled. He gets it about 6 a.m. as soon as he wakes up, pretty much. Um, what someone had mentioned, well, the, basically the people from the company itself had told us, you know what? Put it under his tongue. Let it sit under his tongue, which will give it better absorption. We tried that in the evening. And it's, we said, you know what? Let's try this, too, as well. Let's combine the 10 p.m. dosage with the 7 p.m. dosage so we don't have to wake up this kid who's screaming mad. Crying, kicking, scratching, and punching. He loses his biscuit. So, I mean, if you were if you were living next door, you would swore we were torturing this kid. That's how crazy it sounded hearing him go at it. So, we did this, and it actually allowed him to sleep throughout the night and held him as well through the morning. So, no seizure activities, no hiccups. Mind you, before that, we were seeing changes as well. So, so it definitely does work, what we're doing right now. We also, we also added a new, I don't want to 
say too much about it. What? But we also added a new method where we we're giving a lot of fish oil. Oh yeah, you can say that. Yeah, we give them fish oil. We read somewhere about that. That and helps. And then olive oil. Olive oil, yes. I mean, good luck if you can get kids to eat, take this stuff down. You need more power too, but Aiden's so accustomed to. Oh, you can put it in their food. You don't have to. Oh, yeah, that's true too. You can sprinkle it, but Aiden's been able to take a tablespoon of it uh, daily with no issues. Um, we actually even f- facial oil capsules, mm-hmm. which he takes. He actually counts them and takes them too. So, so we are doing a lot of things to keep this young man healthy. Yeah, I do. We see a big difference with the fish oil. Yes. Yeah. With, with co- speaking, speaking, speech, and cognition. Yeah, definitely. He says things that are funny. I'm like, whoa, where'd that come from? You know, and as a kid, you know, that doesn't really communicate that much, doesn't say as much as you would think a kid at his age. Things were just coming off his, off the tongue. Like it was, he's always been talking. I'm like, whoa. And it's smile, it puts a smile on my face. Cause I'm like, wow. So I have a conversation and we start talking and I realize it. And we also like to communicate with him while he's exercising too, which helps. <laughs> So all these things you got to keep in mind. It's you're always thinking like, how can I take where he is now to the next level? How do I integrate the routines that we're doing to also include, you know, cognitive skills, motor motor skills, you know, all those things that help him develop that you know he would get from school, but reinforced at home. Yeah. So one of the new things that we're doing is that we have Aiden on a balance bike. Yes, the balance bike. So, Weirdest thing ever. I, I didn't grow up with a balance bike. You just learn, okay. you get on the pedals and you learn how to ride a bike. So, it's everyone crazy. that sees Aiden on the balance bike, someone always has some kind of comment. I, I mean, I had a comment, like, where are the pedals? So, okay, so for those of you who are obviously born in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, don't know what this is because we did not use this growing up. Yeah, I didn't use it either. I didn't know that even and not existed. Me- and still, I don't see anyone really using it for <laughs> Aiden. Yeah. I've seen, no, I've seen them. In uh, in New York, you see progressive families. They will use these bikes to help their kids. Yeah. So basically, the new thing is that you don't use training wheels anymore. So Training wheels, that's the least of the thing. You don't even use pedals. There's no pedals. Oh, no. Them. This is what I have to say. So basically, you don't use training wheels. Or pedals. Anymore to look, have your kid learn how to ride a bike. Before you would use the training wheels first, and then you take them off. So with the balance bike, it cuts the training wheels out the, the door. Balance bike is basically a bike without any pedals. You can make one on your own where you take off the pedals of your bike, and you know obviously there's no trainers, or you could buy one. So Aiden is spoiled, so he has both. <laughs> So, the rationale behind a balance bike is that you start training the child on learning how to balance them, balance themselves on a bike first. They have to master that. So, basically, they're using their legs to navigate the bike. And they'll work on that by using their core only. So, you work on your, your stomach muscles and back. So, basically, you are using your balance. Because they're saying that the hardest part of riding a bike is not pushing the pedals. It's actually maintaining your balance. So you start with that first on the balance bike. After they're done with the balance bike, they can go straight to a bike without training wheels. Because the training wheels is, in, in, in England, they call it stabilizers. Yeah, and that's what it does. It stabilizes the bike so you can go on the bike without having the balance part, without learning how to balance yourself. So you already learned that on the balance bike. So now you can go on a bike without training wheels. And I, I watched many YouTube videos on this, and it's been working. And it cuts that part out where the kids are falling excessively and getting frustrated. But for Aiden, I realized that he needed that those steps to be broken down in order for him to learn how to ride a bike because having the steps of balancing and using the leg muscles was a little bit too much. So we're, we're, we're in that balance bike phase right now. And it's working. It's gotten his legs stronger. He's more uh, aware of what he's doing. 
I mean, it's not easy because yeah. he has, you know, you got your trials and errors. Yeah. Not him trying to coordinate his left right. It's not like his the scooter, which took time where he learned how to push off his left leg and then push off his right leg. But it had also made us aware of where he's weak. So what I've noticed is, is now as his right leg is weak when it comes to pedaling. He'll use his left leg um, from heel toe. But when he's using his right leg to push off, he'll just go toe. So that's something that, you know, keeps in mind that, okay, we need to work on certain areas to get him balanced on the bike to using all his muscles, especially his lower extremities. And when a kid is trying, any kid, even if they're typically developing, doing a scooter, any type of bike, they're going to be frustrated. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to see me like you want to give in. But as the parent, you have to push them. Yeah, make sure they stay on that bike. Make sure they stay on it because they're never going to learn. And they're never going to learn that you have to work hard to get something. Yeah, and most, something. yeah, and most of these like gross motor things like jumping rope, riding a bike, riding a scooter, they take practice, a lot of practice. It's not like you're going to step to a rope and know how to jump rope or things like that. The kids need to learn that they need to practice things. And it's good for their brains too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, just overall health-wise, mental and physical. And we take it for granted that kids who are without any ailments could do those things easily. They're jumping up and down off furniture all the time. They're running around. They're doing kids. But when the child does have had some uh, seizures like Aiden's and all that's for his brain, certain things are not clicking with him. So it does take time. It does take coordination and patience. And sometimes he may not have those patients for it, but he does not give up. There's moments where he wants to quit, but he'll get right back on it, especially if you encourage him. And once he notices that he's getting it and you basically reward him and acknowledging that, he's happy. He's like, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. Eventually, we're going to see him really riding that bike and probably pedaling a bike sooner than later. Yeah, that's the goal. I can't that's, wait for that. That's definitely that's exciting. Cool. Looking forward to it. So don't be afraid to take uh, cha- challenges on and changing certain routines. Um, trying to think of rewriting your child's brain. Yes. Just changing the, act- the activities and getting them to do things. I know for some parents it's a little bit more challenging because the child is stationary. There are things you could do from sitting down. Whether you think the child may be cognitive at the time or even aware that you know they're doing something or nothing at all. Put something in their hand. Get them to feel something. Squeeze something. Just try to work um, with that child at where they're at and see if you can take them to the next step. Yeah, so funny. So we had a discussion. We did a lot of stuff with Aiden today. We did the balance bike. Um, We went to the park. It was a beautiful day. And then Osiris did some weightlifting (laughs) with Aiden today. And we both we kind of agree that he needs this physical activity more than some of these like sight words and all that stuff like this should be the most important thing we do with him if anything is the physical activity yeah and there's ways of also including things um that are academic within the physical activities yeah like counting oh yeah and having alphabets words that he can make using his body to do so it's like a movement yeah exactly so everything is working together yeah but it takes time. It's almost like you're almost homeschooling in a way by creating these types of environments for your child to work at. And it's not easy, granted. It's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, but your child's worth it. It's I exhausting, think the, but for worth what it. the goal is, it's it's definitely worth it. And from what we've seen so far and how much he's progressed, uh, it's it's just been amazing. And uh, it's through our hard work and his willingness too to try. Because he can easily just give up and not want to do, which he does sometimes. But we push him and he resists for a bit, but then he gives in and starts working. He really puts in. Uh, it's just a, we have to stay consistent. As parents, you got to stay consistent and you got to stay on top of your kid if you want them to succeed at anything. Yeah. So I think that is it. Yep. Thank you all for tuning in another episode. It's been great. Ciao. All right, everyone. Bye. Thanks for tuning in another episode of Love and Cannabis. I'm Osiris Stephens. And I'm Nina Simmons. Be strong. And stay empowered.